Hi, in this video I would like to show you my next boat project that I designed myself and that I am planning to build in the future. Hi, I'm Jake and this is the first video of a video series about my self-designed plywood sailing dinghy. In this introduction video I would like to show you my basic ideas, the design of the boat, the technical data, some hydrostatic analysis and how I plan to build this boat. Briefly, to my background, I'm a mechanical engineer and the only experience with boat building that I have so far is my self-designed plywood canoe. Uh, of course, I did some internet research and read a few books about boat building and I also have some experience in sailing. As I'm not a very experienced boat builder, it would be great to read some comments about my uh, thoughts in the video comments down below. Well, I haven't started building the boat yet, but to check if the parts fit together and the hydrostatics and sailing characteristics are okay, I built a model boat at a scale of 10%. The weight of this boat is approximately 320 grams and is therefore at the upper limit of the original. Throughout the design process I try to keep in mind the two aspects of making the boat safe and easy to build. These aspects are sometimes conflicting and I'm curious to read what you think about my solutions. And now enjoy the video. I designed this boat to be fast with two adults in it. Therefore it has got a flat planning hull. And in this case the transom will not be below the waterline. However, for family trips in good weather conditions, it is capable to carry more than two people. As the maximum roof load of our car is only 45 kilos, and I think the final weight of this boat will be around 100 or 120 kilos, um, this boat is designed to be trailered. Um, also, to reduce the rigging time and the time for setting it up for sailing, I designed a foldable dagger board. And now I would like to show you the technical data of the boat. The length overall of the boat is 4.4 meters and the length of the waterline is 4.1 meters. The blue line is the waterline from where I measured the draft of the boat. The draft without dagger board is 140 millimeters and with a setup dagger board it is just a bit more than one meter. Midships this boat has a freeboard of 407 mm. The buoyancy of the boat is 329 liters. The beam of the boat is almost 1.8 meters, and I try to design the cockpit so that two adults can put thermorists inside for sleeping. The area of the mainsail is 7.8 square meters and the area of the jib is 2.5 square meters. After I designed the whole boat in my CAD system, I imported it into FreeShip to do some um, hydrostatic analysis. Once I had a working model of this boat in FreeShip, I determined the waterline with the lowest part of the transom right above it. I then entered the draft of the boat into the project settings. With that information I was able to have a look at the lines plan as well as at the hydrostatic results. Another thing I concentrated on was to end up with a hull form of which the center of buoyancy does not change a lot when healed. FreeShip has a default symmetry plane that cuts the hull in two halves. So I imported the full hull, moved it to the side, ending up with two times the buoyancy. But in that case, the center of buoyancy is still correct. To get the correct draft, I ran the hydrostatics tool and entered the draft into the project settings. In my case, the center of buoyancy moved about 3% aft at a heel of 15 degrees. For each iteration of this boat, I plotted the GZ curve to see if the initial stability and the stability when healed was improved or not. I therefore always enter the correct displacement of the hull and always use the same z coordinate of the center of gravity, which means that the gz curves of all hull forms do not represent the reality but are comparable to one another. This boat is not self bailing, so in case it capsizes, it is important to design it so it has a minimum amount of water in it after recovering. 
I therefore designed these blue side tanks, which have a volume of 183 liters each. With the hatches of the main bulkhead closed, this boat has a floating volume of more than 1000 liters. To get an idea about how much water is left after recovering from a capsize, I used this small model boat again. In that test, I only pushed onto the dagger board to turn it upright. Well, there was some water left in the cockpit after recovering, but it was only a small amount, so I'm hopeful that you can sail safely after recovering. I chose for sail cut to design the mainsail and the jib because it's free and easy to use. I did a lot of research in the internet and books to find the values for twist and draft of the sails. But finally I found it and entered it into a sail cut. I came up with this form of the sails because I did not want to have a mast higher than 6 meters. Also the area and the center of the area of the sails are very important because this highly affects one of the main safety features of the boat which is the weather helm. I tried to achieve this by designing the boat so that the center of the sail area, which is called the center of effort, is right aft of the center of the lateral plane, which is also called center of lateral resistance. In my case, this distance is about 10% of the waterline. These two resultants not being at the same position create a momentum which turns the bow into the wind. This comes in handy when you fall overboard because it will cause the boat to stop. But in that case you're going to release the rudder, which means that it can wobble around. I therefore only counted one third of the rudder area for the lateral plane. If my calculations were not precise enough, there will later be some possibilities to change this kind of trim. The first one is to change the position of the mast. Another possibility is to sail without foresail or make a smaller one. These changes lead to a stronger weather helm. But in case you want to reduce the weather helm, you can incline the dagger board. Another thing concerning the safety on board is the position of the boom. In order not to have a mast longer than 6 meters, I chose for this position because the boom cannot crash into the head of these 1.9 meter tall guys when sitting on the side benches, but it can when sitting on the deck. I have no giant CNC machine, so in order to cut out all the sail panels and pieces accurately, I want to use my CNC plotter. Trying to keep the costs low, I tried to make the hull out of four sheets of plywood. Each side of the hull is prepared separately, joining the sheets via scarf joints, cutting them into smaller pieces and rejoining them via scarf joint. Next, the two sides of the hull are joined together with a butt joint. The shown contour needs then to be cut out of the sheets. After that, the pieces are stitched together with zip ties and duct tape. After that, the hull should be looking like this. As a next step, the transom is being installed. Once this is done and all fillets are finished, the bulkheads, the stringers and beams can be installed. After that, the daggerboard case, the side benches and the deck can be glued onto these parts. And last, the rig, the rudder and all the fittings need to be installed. I try to keep the assembly of this boat as simple as possible and therefore all stringers and beams except one have a rectangular shape. The spots where the mess, the shrouds, the stays and the main sheet are attached are highly loaded. Therefore I designed the boat so that multiple parts meet at these spots. The load of the mast is being distributed by a longitudinal reinforcement of the bow, the main bulkhead and the daggerboard case. For the reinforcement of the shrouds I designed the boat so that a bulkhead and the gunwales meet at that position. The main sheet will be attached where the keelson and the daggerboard case meet. Furthermore, the attachment of the forestay was supported by the bow reinforcement. I hope you liked this video, thanks for watching and goodbye.